in I don't think I'll ever let you in Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yell It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yell It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold Pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yell It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold Pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yell It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone
Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off, best friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off, best friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off, best friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off, best friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold
Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off as friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside 
I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you win Easier to break it off, best friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't wanna be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold Going to escort Miss Debenham back to her compartment. Make of that what you will. Captain and Mademoiselle Debenham are obviously... Adamant about not revealing their relationship, but this scene convinced me there is more that is not so obvious. This murder has everyone on edge. In my 25 year career, I have never seen such madness aboard the Orient Express. I understand, my friend. The more we learn, the more perplexing this train ride becomes, but we have other clues to pursue. What do you have in mind? The broken watch on Monsieur Ratchet's wrist, for example. And the handkerchief found near the body. Who does that belong to? This little drama we have just witnessed has not put you off the scent. Far from it, my friend. Will you return to your watch over Mademoiselle Locke? Yes, I will. Dr. Constantine can probably use a break. Good. Au revoir, Poirot. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. No, 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 not good. Hmm. Let me consider all the possibilities. I must admit I'm not right this time. Hmm. Let me consider all the possibilities. Yes, there are only three possible hypotheses. The watch has been tampered with or it is out of adjustment, or it indicates the time of the murder. I shall explore these last two possibilities before reaching any conclusions. If the watch is out of adjustment, it may be broken. There may also be another reason related directly to Ratchet. Maybe the watch is set to another time zone.
think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. I do not think that's the right answer. No, 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 not good. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. My little gray cells did not let me down. That was easy. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. The watch was not defective because the second hand is still moving. My little gray cells did not let me down. Good. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. Nice. If this theory is correct, then the murder took place at 12.15 a.m. I must interrogate all the passengers to see if any of them have an alibi for this hour. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. My little gray cells did not let me down. I'm sorry, sir, but I must concentrate on my baking. Hmm. 
Monsieur Foscarelli, I would like to ask you a few questions, if you allow me. Ah, Signore Poirot, is it? I was wondering when you'd get around to me. Unfortunately, you find me on a mission of mercy. Hello, Monsieur Poirot. Sorry, we have a small problem. The orange juicer has broken down and I can't fix it. Mr. Foscarelli has kindly offered to help me. It isn't a car engine, but I am doing my best. Even with the two of us, we can't manage. Let me guess. You call upon Poirot to help. I'd be happy to answer your questions when we finished. It's a real brain teaser.
Should work correctly now. Thank you so much, Monsieur Poirot. I can put orange juice back on the menu. Bravo! I should stick to automobiles. Well, now we can talk calmly. Monsieur Foscarelli, is it? Antonio Foscarelli? Delighted, Monsieur Poirot. You have, of course, heard about Ratchet's murder last night. Oh, naturally. It is all anyone is talking about. Have you ever been to the United States? Yes, it has been a primary market for our cars for the last ten years. You remember the Armstrong case? Armstrong? The name, yes. It was a little girl. A baby, was it not? Yes, a very tragic affair. Did you know that Cassetti, the kidnapper, was actually Ratchet? Oh, no. Then he deserved to die. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Can you tell me your movements on the night of the murder? I went to bed right after dinner, but I slept very badly. My roommate, uh, Mr. Masterman, had a toothache. Oh, he moaned all night. It woke me up several times. Did you hear anything or notice anything unusual? No, nothing that I can think of. I stayed in my bed all night. Well, thank you, Mr. Foscarelli. I'm sorry I couldn't help more, Signore. I remain at your disposal if you should need me. Enchanté, mademoiselle. You are Hildegard Schmidt? I am Raffol. And you, I know, are Herr Poirot. Correct. May I ask you for a few minutes of your time to answer a few questions? With pleasure, but uh, first may I ask for your help? <laughs> Why does this not surprise me? I... I don't know. I am at your service, Fraulein. My mistress, Princess Dragomirov, has asked me to open this traditional matryoshka doll. There is a trinket inside she must retrieve. Madame, in my experience, each Russian nesting doll simply pulls apart to reveal the next one inside. Indeed. Yet try it for yourself. As you wish. Oh, you are a gentleman.
the inscription reads, To my dearest friend. Oh, thank you very much. This doll reminds her of her youth in Russia. It was very hard under the Soviet regime, but thanks to her strength of will, she rose to be the head of a museum of antiquities in St. Petersburg. Even though she now lives in Berlin, it is said that the Kremlin still fears her. She must be a formidable woman indeed. You are her maid? I am her companion. I help her in her daily tasks, and I keep her company. Ah, forgive me. You will have heard of Ratchet's murder last night. Yes, of course. Everyone is talking about it. Have you lost a handkerchief embroidered with an H, madame? Oh, no, monsieur. I thought perhaps since your first name is Hildegard. It is not mine, I tell you. I could not afford something so nice. I have no idea who it belongs to. My apologies, I did not mean to alarm you. Can you tell me how you occupied your time last night? Just after we left Istanbul, I had tea with my roommate. Fräulein Locke. I went to dinner with the princess, and when I returned to my compartment, Fräulein Locke was already asleep. A little later, Herr Michel, the conductor, came to get me because Madame la Princesse needed my help. Her back troubles her. I massaged her for about an hour. Do you remember the time? Ah, I'm sorry. I do not, mein Herr. Thank you for answering my questions, Madame. Monsieur, I am Hercule... I know who you are, Monsieur Poirot. What do you want? Answers to a simple question or two. All right, but quickly. My wife is quite ill. I would like to stay by her side. I promise. First of all, I imagine you know about the murder. Of course. The Countess is terribly distressed. Your full name? Rodolphe Adrigny. Your home is? Budapest. And how do you come to be aboard the Orient Express? I am a Hungarian diplomat. My family has represented our homeland since the revolution from the Soviet Union in 1956. I was on my country's business in Istanbul. Business which I cannot discuss. And your wife often accompanies you on your diplomatic missions? Yes, and why not? Was there anything else you wanted to know? That's the right answer. Have you ever been to the United States? I was posted to the Hungarian embassy in Washington for a year. You knew, perhaps, the Armstrong family. Armstrong? Armstrong. It is difficult to recall. One meets so many people. Can you tell me how you spent last night? I was in our compartment with my wife. She went to bed early. I... I played a video game on my phone. Around 11 o'clock in the evening, my wife woke up and couldn't get back to sleep. She took a sleeping pill. As for me, I went to bed soon after that and slept straight through until morning. It was the kidnapping of a child, a very sad affair. The culprit was the man on this train who called himself Ratchet, the one who was murdered last night. Indeed. It sounds like justice finally caught up with him. Thank you for your time. Now, I'd like to speak to your wife, if you don't mind. It's impossible. As I told you, my wife is very ill. Thank you, and good luck with the investigation. Eh bien, the good Count does not appear to want me to talk to his wife. Madame Hubbard, may I ask you a question or two? It won't take long. Anything I can do to help. Have you misplaced a handkerchief recently? No, I don't think so. Why? We found the handkerchief embroidered with the letter H, so I thought it might have been yours. I'm sorry, but it's not. 
It may belong to Miss Schmidt, Princess Dragomira of Slady's Maid. I believe her first name is Hildegard. It is a possibility. Anyone could be lying, of course. I thank you, madame. Hello. Can I do something for you? Hello, Monsieur Hardman, I believe. You have heard of the murder? Cyrus Hardman, yes. And the fact that there's been a murder is all over the train. You do not seem very concerned about it, monsieur. It's not the first murder I've run across. I had no idea the selling of toys was so dangerous. I did overhear you mention at dinner that this is your profession. Toy salesman is a cover. I'm a private detective, just like you, from the U.S. That was easy. I did not expect to find another detective on this train. I just finished a job in Istanbul when I received an email from Ratchet. He hired me to protect him. Something you failed to do. I'm not happy about that. He'd received some threatening letters. I was supposed to watch his back, and yeah, something I failed to do. But he seemed to think he was in more danger when he left the train. He was traveling to Paris? I assume so, but I'm not entirely sure. Can anyone on this train confirm your identity? Yeah, that McQueen kid. Ratchet's secretary. Monsieur Hardman, have you heard of the Armstrong case? Armstrong? The kidnapping three or four years ago? Who hasn't? Why? Ratchet's real name was Cassetti. I have reason to believe he was the kidnapper. What? He killed that little girl? No, I didn't know. If I had known, I wouldn't have taken the job. Do you have any idea who was behind the threatening letters? I don't know his name, but Ratchet told me he was a small man. Dark hair, with a womanish kind of voice. Oh. Thank you for your help. Uh, is this handkerchief embroidered with an H yours? Do I look like the kind of guy who would use a handkerchief like that? Were you on duty last night? You bet. I kept my door open a crack and I watched all night. No one entered that car who didn't belong there. Did you see anything in particular? The conductor, Michelle. He was there most of the time, too, except for 15 minutes or so after we left Vinkovsky. He must have answered a call from Ratchet's room, then he was absent again for a while around 1 a.m. After that, he didn't move until 5. <laughs> Thank you for answering my questions, Monsieur Hardman. Listen, Poirot, I know I fell down on the job, but if you need help, any at all, let me know. I'd like to make it right. Well, it has been a while since I have seen one of those. I'm not prepared to receive anyone. Come back later. Very well, madam. I'll come back later. But you will need to speak to me. I am not prepared to receive any- Very well. So, my friend. Have you finished your investigation? No, but I have managed to solve a few mysteries. Okay. I stay here to watch this young lady. Excuse me, Doctor. May I ask you a question? Anything that can help the investigation, Mr. Poirot. 
I wanted to know what your first name is, Doctor. My name is Robert. Why? To find out if the handkerchief embroidered with an H could have been yours. I'm a doctor, Mr. Poirot. Cloth handkerchiefs are a playground for viruses. I would not touch one. I hope your investigation is going well, Mr. Poirot. Ah! Monsieur McQueen, may I ask you a question? Anything I can do to help, Mr. Poirot? This handkerchief embroidered with an H. Is it yours? No, I don't use cloth handkerchiefs. Thank you. I won't bother you anymore. I am not prepared. Very well. Monsieur, if I am to catch this murderer, I will need your help. My help? I am at your service, Poirot. You are obviously a devoted husband, Count Andrini. My wife means the world to me. There were questions in Budapest about a Hungarian diplomat marrying an American woman. It did not deter you. I would have given up my position for her. I would think it is universal. Are you married, Mr. Poirot? No. I fear marriage is not for me. But her condition, is it very grave? She is suffering a bout of vertigo. You understand? The room spins. If you allowed me, perhaps I could come in and see if I can help your wife. Are you a doctor? I thought you were a detective. We have much in common, do you not think? We both try to find solutions to mysteries. Then I won't keep you from the mystery you are undoubtedly more qualified to solve. Monsieur. My help? You My wife, it, I would, I would think, no, she, it. I think Dr. Constantine could help your wife. There is a doctor on this train? I did not know. Where is this doctor? I think Dr. Constantine is in the lounge car. If not, perhaps the conductor can tell you where he is. Very well, I will find him. Thank you very much. Forgive me for intruding, madame. I am Hercule Poirot. I know who you are, Mr. Poirot. I overheard you send my husband on a wild goose chase. Your husband cares for you greatly, madame. I apologize for exploiting that fact. 
But the situation is urgent, and I need to ask you a few questions. Apology accepted. I realize you must speak to everyone. This horrendous murder. It's very upsetting. That is a beautiful music box. Please don't touch the music box. It's a fragile family heirloom. Your accent, is it American? Boston, perhaps? You have a good ear, Mr. Poro. Yes. Born and raised in what we call the Back Bay. Are you in the diplomatic service like your husband? No, not officially. I was still in college when I met Rudy two years ago. I keep myself busy handling his scheduling, travel, appointments. Ah, what is this saying? Behind every great man there is a great woman. That was the saying. Today one might reverse the sentiment as well, don't you think? Of course, I stand corrected. My little gray cells did not let me down. A handkerchief embroidered with an H was found at the crime scene. By any chance, does your first name begin with an H? No, my first name is Elena, with an E. Hmm. Can you tell me what you did last night? Well, my husband and I went to dinner. Then we came back here. We went to bed around 10 o'clock. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't, because of the shaking of the train. I suffer from vertigo. I finally took a sleeping pill, and that did the trick. When did the train's motion prevent you from sleeping? Between midnight and 2 a.m. I know, because I must have looked at my watch about 10 times. Hmm, I see. Come now, Countess. You are not telling me the truth. Why do you say that? The train stopped at 12.30 a.m. due to snow. So there was no shaking of the train. But you told me that it was the shaking that prevented you from sleeping. I don't know. You're confusing me. My vertigo. Madame... A man died last night. You can't talk nonsense just because you're sick. You are hiding something from me. How dare you! I didn't do anything wrong. I'm going to find my husband. That was unkind, I know, but my strategy worked. I can now inspect this room in peace. These must be the sleeping pills that Countess Andreni took last night. There seems to be something missing here.
an engraving written in, I believe, Russian Cyrillic. It looks like a first name. For my beautiful young ladies, Helena and Sonia. Helena with an H. It's Countess Andreni with an older girl. Praro! Have you no shame? Monsieur, I am afraid shame is not a very helpful emotion for a detective trying to get at the truth. What are you doing in our compartment? I am investigating a murder, Count Andreni. My wife is ill. My apologies, monsieur, but your wife seemed in perfect health when she left the room to find you. I do apologize, but I needed to search your compartment. You will regret this, Poirot. Please, Count. You aren't going to challenge me to a duel, are you? Countess, I'm afraid I took the liberty of inspecting your little music box. How dare you! The message in the medallion was addressed to you and Sonia. Sonia Armstrong, your older sister, the mother of Daisy, the murdered child. I am a Hungarian diplomat. You have no official standing here. You have no right to search- No, Rudolf. Let me speak. It's useless to deny what this gentleman says. I am Helena Goldenberg, the sister of Sonia Armstrong, and Daisy was my niece. The music box is a gift from my sister's godmother, a very close friend to my mother. We hid the truth from you when we learned that the man killed last night was the person who destroyed my family. I panicked. I didn't want to be accused. That is also why you lied about the H in your first name? Exactly. Your ferreting about looking for the H is obviously part of your investigation. If I found a anchor chief in Monsieur Ratchet's room embroidered with an H, I might suspect you had been there. A handkerchief? I don't have any handkerchiefs embroidered with my initial. To be honest, that sounds awfully old-fashioned to me. I give you my word of honor that last night, Helena never left her compartment. My wife is telling you the truth, Baro. I hope so. I'll let you rest. The matter of the age on the anchor chief still needs clearing up. But first, I should check the inscription on the back of the medallion. Natalia Dragomirov. She is the only Russian passenger on the train. In addition, 
Her first name begins with an H in Cyrillic. That was easy. 